Praise the Lord, my friends. Bless you all. Hallelujah. Bam, bam, shaka baba. Reka tarabroso torabroto. What's happening, everybody? God bless you. Glory to God. It's good to see you. It's good to be here. It's been a hot minute. There's a lot going on in the spirit, obviously, in the atmosphere. So I want to talk to you about some things God has put in my heart. I want to address some things in the spirit today. Hallelujah. Let me know where you are watching from. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, one of your favorite prophetic voices. Amen. Truly, there are many pathetic voices out there. A lot of copycats, naysayers, gossipers. Uh, you know, critics, cynics, but I'm telling you, uh, God is moving, God is speaking, and today I'm going to release a spoken rhema word, fresh from the throne of heaven, and uh, why don't you comment below, let me know where you are watching from, I'm broadcasting live here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and uh, just enjoying a little bit of workcation, not a full vacation, but a workcation where I get to, you know, kind of go away and, and still do my work and tap into the things of God and progress in my responsibilities and the things that I'm committed to do. Amen. Uh, but today on this Friday, on the Shabbat Shalom, wherever you're watching in from, I want you to give some hearts and likes. I want you to comment below where you were watching from. And I want to release this prophetic word because everything uh, that we do is prophetic and Right now, I believe the Spirit of God is moving and breathing, and I want to prophesy. I want to declare the word of the Lord over your life. Amen. And I also want to give some insight and intel uh, to clarify uh, what you're feeling or what is happening spiritually, supernaturally, overall. Because uh, who here knows that we need clarity? All right. Clarity is rarity. I want you to... To write that clarity is rarity. And the greater the clarity you have, good to see you, Pastor David, shalom to you. The greater the clarity you have, the greater the rarity. And in today's world, there's way too many voices. There's way too many distractions. There's way too much noise that's happening. And that's really the plan of the enemy. The plan of the enemy is, of course, to try to you know, distort, distract, and destroy. And uh, I believe right now that God is releasing clarity. God is releasing rarity because there are true rare voices, vessels that God's raising up all across the earth. So listen, today I want to talk about uh, the power to dismantle the enemy. I want to talk about the plans of God to destroy the yokes of the enemy. We understand that there's things going on in Florida right now. And of course, Georgia and Tennessee with the storm, etc., etc. But I want to begin to minister to you the prophetic word of the Lord. Amen. So as you're jumping in, help us to build a room today. Amen. As you're jumping in today on this Holy Ghost broadcast, I want you to help build up the room. Let's build up the algorithm. Obviously, I've been, I haven't been doing these lives because I've been very busy. Amen. You know, I'm not just a social media prophet or a social media prophetic voice. Although God has given us these platforms, amen. But uh, obviously, you know, I'm traveling the world and we're doing crusades. And I want to thank you all in advance for your love and prayers and partnership for the crusades we just did uh, last week in Tijuana and in Mexicali. God is good. Good to see you, Pastor Carlos. And as well, now we're gearing up because in two weeks time, I'm going to be in Uganda, Africa. And we got a mega major crusade in Uganda, Kasanda, Uganda. And then after that, I'm even going to the Middle East. So you need to keep me in prayer because God is sending me. God is sending us uh, into the darkest regions of the world. So we can Holy Ghost blitz, blast it with the fire, the power of God. Amen. Bam, bam. And uh, I believe that there's a sending anointing right now. So I want to declare over you, God is sending help. God is sending resources. God is sending his word. The Bible says, send forth your word and I will be healed. So there is a sending anointing taking place where God is sending his ministering spirits. God is sending his angels. Amen. And I believe, hear me now, in the last three months of this year, 
All right, as we're approaching the last quarter, there's going to be big bang. There's going to be mega glory. There's going to be greater glory, recompense, payback. I want to tell you right now, God is resetting and reshifting the whole stage, okay? So get ready for suddenlies and for surprises. My gosh, I got so much I want to say to you. So come on, just keep building the atmosphere in the Holy Ghost. Zabaka and pray in the spirit, even as you tap into this prophetic broadcast. Come on, lift up your hands. Father, I thank you for the realm of suddenlies. I thank you for the winds of change. I thank you for ministering spirits that will carry them, that will move them. I declare you're moving from glory to glory. Whatever's been holding you back, any setback, Rebbe, any bondage, whatever's been keeping you stuck in the spirit, God is going to clarify to rarify and that clear prophetic word, rhema revelation is going to break you through and breathe you through. So I declare fresh breath over you in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people say amen and amen and amen. Listen, I feel the fire of God. Amen. And once again, I want to thank you all in advance for your love and prayers and partnership. Um, I'm just enjoying another last day here of workcation, not a full vacation, but a workcation because next week we'll go to Miami. We have a divine appointment with Apostle Maldonado. Then after that, we go to Uganda and there's just so much that God is doing. All the glory goes to God and all of God's people say amen and amen. But listen, um, in a few days, I'm going to uh, come on and minister about Rosh Hashanah here. So just be on the lookout for that. Because Rosh Hashanah is exactly in one week's time now. And it's a new Hebrew year. And whenever it's a new Hebrew year, there's things that begin to manifest. Okay, the enemy tries to sideswipe you. The devil tries to attack you. Remember, he is like a roaring lion, prowling, seeking whoever he may devour. So the enemy is looking for open doors right now. But at the same time, the Lord is purging and purifying and he's getting us ready for the greatest breakthrough and promotion of our lives. If you believe that, say amen. But I really believe right now that God is releasing strategy. He's releasing a fresh anointing. And I really believe right now that God is about to break you through. So listen, lift up your hands. Father, I thank you for the comeback anointing, for the spirit of breakthrough, that you are about to break your children through in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people say amen, amen, and amen. And I really don't know why the, the numbers and algorithms are so low, but... Help me to break you through today in Jesus' name. Because the devil is lost. It's probably because I haven't been doing these lives in a hot minute. In months, really. As consistently as I like to do. But listen, there's a number of things I want to talk about. Of course, as we're approaching uh, Rosh Hashanah, uh, Yom Kippur, the 10 days of awe, which is the new Hebrew year. There's going to be an opening of a book and the closing of a book. So there's going to be closing doors, closing of the old doors, old chapters, a closing of old relationships. There's going to be a closing of demonic circles and entities. And that's why the enemy is manifesting and moving in the way he is right now. Because he knows he's a sore loser. The devil is a liar. He's a pix pipsqueak devil. He's under our feet. And that's why he's, you know, barking loud like a little chihuahua, yo quiero Taco Bell dog. But you see, what's going on right now is the doors are opening, the books are opening, but also doors and books are being closed. Amen. So right now we shut the mouth of lions. We shut the mouths of the accused of the brethren of Nasir. We shut the mouths of snakes and serpents. And the old doors are shut in the blood of Jesus by the grace of God. All of God's people say amen. So today I want to talk about breaking strongholds because strongholds are being broken we need to understand that what's going on right now uh corporately regionally spiritually and even individually is that strongholds are being broken the strong man is being bound what's going on with florida um and of course the east coast the southeast coast what's going on there is that there's strong men being bound yes it is you know, I believe it's harp. I believe it's bioengineering, you know, chemical bioengineering, seeding. I believe, you know, it's the one world order, obviously, you know, but you need to hear me because, and on Monday, I'm going to release the prophetic word of the month for October. But I believe this month of October is going to be the witchiest month we've ever experienced. The level of witchcraft 
before the election, hear me, before the securing of President Donald J. Trump as the 47th president, before the election day, the, the month of October there's gonna, is going to be one of the witchiest months that we've ever seen experience on planet Earth. All right, I'm telling you, the hordes of hell are trying to open up. The hordes, the gates of hell are trying to open up. But the gates of Hades will not prevail against the true ecclesia, against the true church. So in the next month, even as we're coming into the new Hebrew year, bam. As we're coming into the new Hebrew year, bam. And as we're shifting, as we're about uh, 36, 7 days. Come on, people. From today, we're 36, 7 days away from the election. President Donald J. Trump being secured as the 47th president of the United States. Amen. Hallelujah. And, you know, there's all this witchcraft coming against President Trump, coming against Christians, coming against believers, against Republicans, against America, because they're chanting death to America. They're chanting, you know, America will be destroyed, blah, blah, blah. That's all witchcraft, not that nays here, all right? But you see what's going on right now is that there's a stirring of the pot, there's a stirring of the atmosphere, there is a breaking down of strongholds. In order for something to be destroyed, it must be revealed. In order for something to be exterminated, it must be exposed. So what God's doing is he's shifting and stirring up the atmosphere so that things are being exposed, so that things are being manifested and revealed. Come out, come out wherever you are. Come out of hiding. Come out of those caves, those wolves in sheep's clothing, those little foxes, those little creepers, those little crawlers. So what's going on right now is the Spirit of God is moving, but he's also, he's, he's moving, but he's also shaking, moving, and exposing the plans and the plots of the enemy. Once again, hear me now. I believe this month of October is going to be one of the witchiest months we've ever seen on planet Earth. Because they're trying to destroy and come against America and President Donald J. Trump. But we know that we have the victory. We know that we have the blood of Jesus. Or his blood speaks a better word. They have overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. Amen. So I really believe right now that there is a strategy of the devil, but there's also a strategy of heaven. And who here knows that his ways are higher, his thoughts are higher. Who here knows that God's ways are going to triumph and trump over the ways of the enemy. Can I get an amen? But we need to be a praying church. We need to be a partnering church. We need to be a bride that's connected to the groom so that we're aware of the time of the season, what God is doing, instead of keeping our heads dug down and buried in the soil of the ground in fear, just building our own ministries, because all we're doing is we're consumed about saving our own image and building up our own little gimmicky churches and ministries instead of really being concerned with the times and seasons and the things of God and what really matters. America and the world is in a threshold. We are in a plumb line and it's so important for the praying church to be partnered with Jesus, with Yeshua in this moment. Somebody say amen. What's going on with Israel right now? Okay. Increased attacks. Listen, it's almost one year anniversary since the attack, since the invasion, since the hostages were taken. And I was there in Israel, October 7th, all right, the beginning of the war against Israel. I was there in Israel. And by the grace of God, that same day, myself and our 300 group, we were able to leave. But why am I saying this? Because there is a strategy from God, a plan from heaven. God's not going to let you down. The Lord's not going to let us down. And I want to declare over you right now that in the, in the stirring and in the shifting rebe of the atmosphere and even of the natural weather, remember, because the natural is a manifestation of the supernatural, the visible is a manifestation of the invisible. We know that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard against them. So God has a better word. And I want to declare right now that there is a bondage-breaking anointing being released right now. A bondage-breaking anointing being released. Come on, lift up your hand. Father, I say, full of the Holy Ghost. Sha, re soto. The fire of the Holy Ghost. I destroy every word curse. 
Rebbe, every spirit of confusion. Rebbe, Torah, Mamati. Every spirit of manipulation and witchcraft. And don't you know that witchcraft is confusion and manipulation? Is heaviness. Is that witchy python spirit. So we break that now by the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Listen, today I want to talk about the power to break demonic strongholds. Because I really believe right now we're in a season we need to get our prayers up. Now, are you a prayer warrior? If you are a prayer warrior, I want to say that to me and give us some hearts and lies. We are in a season right now. We really need to get our prayers up. Okay, increase the weapons of fasting and prayer. Increase the weapons of awareness. Watch and pray, Jesus said. Okay, now I shared this, uh, shared something similar to this in my online group mentorship 7M Glory Equip. Uh, just a few days ago. But I really believe right now we need to have our prayers up. We need to have our guards up, our walls up, our shields up. Amen. Harabashanda, because God is assembling the body of Christ to destroy and dismantle the mental strongholds, strongman, the yokes of the enemy. And I want to declare right now, all right, there are ancient strongholds being broken right now. There are ancient demonic strongholds being broken around. Do you know how long the CDC, the WH, and what happened yesterday? What happened two days ago? Guys, the United Nations and the WHO just came together and they signed this treaty against the freedom of speech. Socialism, communism, globalism, the devil is a liar. Universalism, all these isms which is straight from the pit of hell. And they did that even while, what, a week or two weeks ago, the Pope said that all religions lead to God, are paths to God. The devil is a liar. Go back to the pit of hell in Jesus' name. The Lord rebuke you. So what's going on right now is that there's things going on behind the scenes and, and the storm. Come on, somebody. Kamala. Global warming, all these things are little distractions. Did he, did he do it, did he not? All these things are distractions from what's really going on. So that we're distracted and we're not paying attention. But anyways, I'm telling you this today because we really need to get our prayers up. We really need to be watchful and prayerful because there's a plundering of the enemy. There's a breaking down of ancient strongholds and demonic yokes. But hear me now, but there's also going to be many caught in the enemy's lines. Many are going to be caught in the enemy's lines. Many are not going to make it. Many are not going to break through. Many are not going to be able to ascend or go to the next level because of a political spirit, because of a, a, a racist spirit, because of a spirit of antagonizing from drinking the Kool-Aid of Jezebel. Because they've opened up the doors of their hearts to the enemy. So therefore, they have so much in common with the enemy. Aramanda. So because of this, they're not going to fully break through or break out. And that's why this next month, we need to be strategic in our prayers, we need to, I'm telling you friends, this is much bigger than you, it's much bigger than me, it's much bigger than our little churches, our ministries. This is about the future. This is about the next five, 10 years. This is about what's about to come, good to see you one minute tune. This is about what God's about to do and I'm telling you, there's a striking of the ground. I see it right now. There's a striking of the ground. There's a striking of the enemy. There's a crushing of the head of the serpent. There's an anointing to crush the head of the serpent in this season. So what's going on right now? Things are being exposed, shifted, and sifted. My gosh. Somebody say amen. Listen, today I'm talking about uh, breaking demonic strongholds. And I got one verse here, one main verse here, and we're going to... Go on to this right here if you're with me today. Say amen. I know it's been a hot minute. I hope you all missed me. All right. These algorithms on meta are cray cray. But maybe because I haven't been on for a long time. But anyways, James 5.16. James 5.16. I got three versions. 
Therefore, confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Now, we know King James Version says, availeth much. All right, there is an effective persevering, a pushing, a breaking through, an advancement. Okay, the ESV says the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So as the prayer is working, as the power is in effect, there is greater power that begins to build. The principle of sowing and reaping is you will only build or grow as you're sowing or as you're in the game, as you're in the flow or in the anointing. Um, the NLT says the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Amen. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Amen. So we understand that even in this uh, even in this context, hallelujah, in the book of James, it begins to compare and relate to the prophet Elijah. And now prophet Elijah prayed that it would not rain for three plus years in Israel. Why? I thought rain was good. I thought, I thought rain was a sign of blessing. I thought rain was from God. But you see, Israel, hear me now, was idolizing, was in idolatry, adultery, spiritual adultery. Israel was worshiping Baal, Malek, false gods, Ashtaroth, and therefore they were going to these other demonic deities to receive blessing. So therefore Elijah the prophet came in and said, no, we're going to cut off that source. Are you hearing me? We're going to block out that demonic blessing. We are going to stop what the enemy is doing in the heavens. And Elijah the prophet prayed it would not rain for three years. And eventually, bam, he prayed again and it began to rain. We need to pray for the rain. We need to pray for the move of God. We need to pray for God's hand to move. We need to pray that the power, the fire of God will move like never before. Are you hearing me? I'm telling you, many of you people right now, all right, you're praying for money. Come on, how many of you, you've been broke as a joke? I mean, it's been difficult under Bidenomics, under all this inflation. All right, listen, hear me now. Don't let money be your God, okay? Don't let, uh, don't let finances, don't let money, don't let the economy be your God. We move and live from the realm of the economy of heaven. Are you hearing me? But you see, there's something that God's doing right now where he's saying, son, daughter, I want you to believe for the rain to come, for provision, for power, for blessing, because the prayers of the righteous availeth much. It's effective. The true question is, are you being effective? The true question is, are your prayers effective? Are your prayers heard? Are your prayers received? Are your prayers powerful? Are there results? Or is it just air? Is it just blah, 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 like a blah, balonian? All right, but you see, there is an effectiveness to our prayers. And we see that with the prophet Elijah. He spoke and he moved from the realm of the spirit. Therefore, he was able to declare the word of God. I'm telling you, God is raising up Elijah prophet. Prophets, Elijah intercessors, okay? You're not a prophet because you can prophesy. You're a prophet because you have intimate relation with God, which means you are a deep-seated person in the realm of prayer. We need to raise up the walls of prayer, the shields of prayer. I'm telling you, I see in the spirit right now, God is connecting prayer warriors He's connecting intercessors like a wall of prayer. Just like Nehemiah was sent to rebuild the walls that had fallen in Israel, in Jerusalem. God is rebuilding the walls of prayer, the walls of unity 24-7, even as there's been exposure and an attack on the house of prayer movement, even with Mike Bickle and all the nonsense that whatever took place and God is the God of justice, amen. But even with the attack on the house of prayer, it doesn't mean that God is done or he's moving away. No, come on, my house shall be called a house of prayer, says God. My father's house will be a house of prayer for all nations. So God is raising up the tents of David, the tabernacles of David, Amos 9 11. He's raising up the watchmen on the wall, amen, so that we will watch and pray, so that we will prophesy, we will declare the word of the Lord. But there's a rebuilding of walls of prayer that's taken 
in place. Come on, if my people who are called by my name, if they humble themselves and turn away from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land, says God. So there is a spiritual lowliness, not lonely, lowliness. There's a spiritual debasing. There's a spiritual humbling coming, friends. You know why? Because Rosh Hashanah begins the 10 days of awe. And Rosh Hashanah is next Thursday. It is October 3rd, the new Hebrew year. But the beginning of the new Hebrew year, it begins 10 days of awe up to Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, the holiest day of the year. Amen. Hear me now. And why is this important? Because it opens up 10 days of waiting. 10 days of hanging in the balance. 10 days of being observed with the eyes of God on the just scales of justice. 10 days. And Rosh Hashanah begins the 10 days of waiting before the throne of God, the mercy seat of the Lord, so that you will come before him and be judged and receive marching orders, whether yea or nay, come into the right hand of the kingdom of the Father or go through the left hand of evildoers, sinners, and mockers. Destiny scrolls are being released. Scrolls are being released. Papers are being released. Come on. Rebeso. Man, I'm telling you, 51 people right now, I hope you catch this and you tap into the spirit of God of the urgency of this word because God is raising up people of prayer. Houses of prayer. Jesus, help me, Lord. Psalm 16. Good to see you all. Psalm 16, verse 1. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. For in you I take refuge. That word in other translations say, for, for you are my shield. Preserve me. So prayer is a spirit of preservation. Prayer is a spirit of prosperity. It's in the realm of prayer that it's in God's presence that not only are we preserved, but we will prosper. I want to declare over you, you're about to prosper like never before. You are about to prosper and increase like never before. Why? Because a spirit of preservation, like the land of Goshen, come on somebody, Goshen glory zones, I prophesied this, ministered this, you know, uh, in Rabaka in 2020, during the beginning of Corona Bologna, but we need to get our prayer shields, our prayer walls up, we need to get our the spirit of unity up, the watchman on the wall, because there's a greater strategic attack of the enemy that the devil is trying to release an onslaught. And like I said earlier in the beginning, not many will make it. Not many will make it. Most people are playing Kumbaya, my Lord. Most people, hear me. Uh oh, here we go. Let's go. Most people are so caught up with their own business rather than God's business. We're all the people of God right now. Are we really on kingdom business or are you stuck? on trying to build up your own business, your own money. Absolutely, we need money. Absolutely. But what about souls? What about the kingdom? So way too many people right now are so consumed with the little empires and sandcastles. We're so consumed with trying to preserve our own financial well-being. The devil is a liar. Give everything you have. Break the vase. Break the vessel. Be like Mary. Don't hold back. Stop being stingy. Stop being such a, you know, such a stingy giver. Such a stingy Christian. So not many will make it. Not many is going to break through. Amen. I'm telling you right now, God is exposing the hearts. <clears throat> He's exposing our hearts. There, whenever there is, whenever there's exposure, there's a resetting. Thank you, Lord. There's a rarity. And I want to prophesy over you. God is rarifying you. Because you will stand, shine bright, aloud like a diamond in the rough. Amen. Raman diarablasato. Prayers that availeth much that are effective. James 5, 16, the prophet Elijah prayed. It didn't rain for three years. 
And then he prayed again, reversed the curse, and it began to rain. I want to declare over you that God is re releasing mandates, assignments, mantles of prayer right now. He's saying, church, can we pray? He's saying, church, can we pray to release the spirit of preservation over America? Can we pray to release preservation, a covering, a refuge, a shield, a prayer wall? Can we pray so that the spirit of preservation is released over our country? Because I'm telling you, it's time to pray. And like I said earlier, and I'm going to share this more on Monday during the prophetic word of the month for October. I really believe October is going to be one of the most witchiest months we've ever seen. The level of witchcraft and warfare is increasing. And this coming month, October, or the new Hebrew month of Tishrei, the first month of the new Hebrew year, it's going to be high level of demonic activity. But those who wait upon the Lord, we will rise up and mount up on wings like eagles. And even though you go through the fire, it will not be touched. It, it will not touch you. Even though we go through the waters, it will not take over you. Hallelujah. Because that's the spirit of preservation. I want, I want to say a few things before I close with, with some points here. If you're with me today, say amen. Um, right now, I saw a bondage or a strong man of poverty, confusion, and destruction where many people were in a bondage and I actually saw a web, like a cobweb, a spider web of witchcraft. And what I saw was a bondage or a web of poverty, confusion, and destruction, where many people feel like things are dying, things are being destroyed, they're losing it, they're losing things. The enemy's coming to still kill and destroy, and obviously it's happening with the illegal invasion of immigrants. We're seeing it happen everywhere. But you see, I saw these strongholds, like these webs of witchcraft, and I saw it being destroyed and exposed. And I saw a breaking of the light, a breaking of the dawn. I saw God breaking through, shining, like the God of justice as he is a light. So number one, I saw a web bondage of witchcraft, of poverty, confusion, destruction being destroyed. Okay, so what's going on right now with all of the storms, with all of the ships and everything, this is actually an exposure, but it's also a destruction of the enemy. Number two, I saw unusual attacks happening unusual attacks where some people are, you know, getting sideswiped, being attacked by the enemy, whether by sickness, infirmity, whether by financial. I mean, if you've been following me and my journey, you know, the last few weeks, there's been strategic demonic attacks against me, even from the U.S. government. But the devil is a liar. Defend the Second Amendment because we have the second to defend the first. And I got angels because I'm his son. But you see right now there are unusual attacks being stirred up and some of it is a distraction. But some of it also is an upgrade and a promotion. So, and I also saw number three, unusual setbacks where where it's almost like you feel like even in this last quarter of the year, you feel like, you know, you made 10 steps forward, but now you're 15 steps back. And that's called a setback. And many people feel set back in their finances. Maybe you've dipped into your savings, your family savings, you're in the red with your credit card because of Bidenomics and communist Harris. And because many of us are, you know, there's things going on. So whatever setback you've experienced in your ministry, in your life, your family, your finance, your business, whatever, set, these unusual setbacks of the enemy. But there's going to be a comeback in Jesus' name. There's going to be a comeback anointing, a breaker anointing to break you through, to cause you to restore and to be returned like never before. Are you hearing me? But we need to get our prayers up. Number one, I saw 
witchcraft webs, demonic strongholds being broken, exposed. Number two, I saw unusual attacks, sudden attacks out of nowhere. And that's Jezebel, of course. Number three, unusual setbacks. But that will cause you to have a comeback anointing. Okay. And then number four, I saw a shifting and a resetting. A shifting and a resetting. Listen, friends, I really believe that many of you watching right now, there's going to be such a new glory, such a new level, such a new thing that God's about to do. But we have to let go of the old. We have to let go and let God. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Many of us right now, there's a new thing God's about to do. There's a new thing, a new glory that God's about to do. But right now, it's hard for us to discern exactly what. And if that's you, say that to me. You know there's some fresh and some new. I cannot keep going around the same mountain and circle and cycle and be stuck in this religious repetitive redundancy that's called insanity, which is doing the same thing over and over and over again. But I, I'm expecting different results. There's a new thing, new assignments, new mantles. There's some fresh new vision. I declare new vision right now. 2020 vision, I sight over you. God's releasing new vision over your life. And you're about to see the promised land. You're about to see a good report. You're about to see the new thing, the God thing. You're about to see what God has prepared for you. For truly, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. What God has prepared for those who truly love him. So are you ready to see? And number five, what's happening right now is that there's an increase of prayer and love and fresh fire. Now, when I was in NorCal just a couple of weeks ago, I felt a striking of the ground and I felt the realm of extended revival. And whenever it's around this time of the year, there's a realm of extended revival God gives us. And, you know, I've had a number of extended revivals, 21 days, three months, you know, 14 days, 11 days. But it's around this time there's a realm of extended revival because it's in alignment with the Hebrew New Year and with the times and seasons of what God's doing. Bam! The 10 days of all. So there's something that God's doing right now where he's saying, I'm releasing a fresh fire of love, first love, and prayer. I want to say first love and prayer. The fire of first love is connected to our intimacy of prayer. And I believe right now God is releasing strategy, strategy. God is releasing an anointing of love, of intimacy, where even in midst of all the storms and warfare and witchcraft, even in midst of all of the confusion and the cobwebs of the enemy, even in midst of all of the nonsense that's happening, that we are preserved, we're covered, we're confident in the abode of God. We're confident in the love of Jesus. We're confident that I will surely see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I'm telling you, that fire will burn up all the attacks. That fire will burn up all the witchcraft. The fire of God's love is greater, stronger <laughs> than any other fire, nonsense, drama of the enemy. So I declare open heavens right now. I declare striking of the ground, breakthrough anointing, comeback anointing. I declare the fire of God. And if you need to tap into that fresh fire of first love, intimacy, prayer, I want you to comment amen and amen and give us some hearts and likes right now because the spirit of God, amen, is about to rekindle the oil of our lamps. I know you've been busy, my friend. I know you've been all over the place. I know you've been hustling. I know you're a mother, a father. I know you've been trying to put food on the plate for your children. I know remete suka. I know it's been difficult, tiring, lonesome at times. And I know you've been burnt by people, even the church. And if you know you've lost the fire, the hunger, sometimes you're like, I don't even want to go to church. I don't even. But God is saying, there's a fresh fire coming. Hallelujah! There's a fresh fire that's coming. So I declare fresh vision, fresh revelation, 
new eyes to see, new eyes of fires. Come on, put your hands on your eyes. I declare eyes of fire. Eyes of fire in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. I'm telling you, there are strongholds being broken right now. Bondages and yokes being broken right now. And we need to have our prayer walls, our prayer shields, prayer unity up together in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, friends, in the name of Jesus, because there's a Holy Ghost outbreak of revival. What the enemy meant for evil, God will use it for good. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard. Hallelujah. And we need to have our faith up. We need to have our fires up, our prayers up. I destroy, I thwart every plan of the enemy, every sabotaging spirit, every confusing spirit, any kind of chaos in the atmosphere, in the sky above, I destroy it, and I declare clarity. Of the frequency of God's rima is coming to your life. Ah! Holy Ghost, somebody shout hallelujah. Some of you, it's been hard to connect because there's been so much demonic warfare, busyness in your mind, in your head, frustration, anger, complaining, noise, things are happening left and right, left and right. Ha ha, shikara, su. Listen to me, I declare right now, storm. Become winds and the waves cease. Hurricane Helen sees now in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Come on, I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Because the Lord has authority over the waves and the winds. Who is this? That even the waves and the winds listen to this man. Obey this man. Holy Ghost. Jesus. I think for authority, for dominion. Mandare karobroso tanam landa ka. Rebe sora broso konam landa tish karablata. It's all under your feet, my friends. It's all under your feet. Rabbi, so I declare even after this broadcast, you're going to walk like the lion of the tribe of Judah. You're going to walk with the roar of heaven. I declare even after this broadcast, you're going to walk in dominion and authority. Can I get an amen? There's an oomph back. There's a comeback. There's an oomph back in your spirit. A clearer vision. Where you felt like you were looking to the left and right. Oh, I got to do this. But Martha, Martha. <laughs> Martha, you're consumed with many things. They're good things. But is it the God thing? Mary, the one thing, Jesus. The one thing, Mary. Amen. Jesus, lift up your hands. Father, I thank you for the anointing of Mary. For the love of Mary. Masha tiar brusu kosata. Jesus, Jesus, Jaman di Arabroso Cora Brande Ti Arabrotata, Raman di Arabrata, the prayers that availeth much, like the prophet Elijah, like the prophet Elijah, can we pray, can we birth, can we shift? Friends, I want you to hear this. Strongholds are being exposed and broken, but many will be stuck and will be held back by the webs of witchcraft, by the traps of the enemy. But I'm declaring over you right now, God has already given us the victory. And God is calling us to lift up our walls, shields of prayer and fire. Someone say fire power. Amen. Jesus. I feel like I just got a new book title. So I'm going to say amen. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I declare right now that even as we're on Shabbat Shalom and literally in about five to six days, we're stepping into the new Hebrew year, Rosh Hashanah. 
I declare right now the fire of God, clarity, revelation. Amen. Just put your hand on the screen right now. Father, I come in agreement with their destiny scroll. In heaven, as the psalmist said, as it is written about me, here I am. Father, I thank you right now. Clarity, alignment, breakthrough, fire. Ziba kara brusoto. Listen, even right now, I just feel a shifting in many of your minds, even a repentance, where the Lord is convicting hearts. I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I'll stand in awe of you. Have we lost the awe and wonder of God? Have we lost the fear of the Lord? Listen, some of us, we've been complaining. God, don't you care about me? God, why did you, you sound like the Israelites after they got delivered from Egypt. God, don't you care about me? Some of you, you've been complaining. Some of you, you lost the fear of the Lord. You lost the awe of God and therefore you've been trying to command God and twist and turn his arm for your benefit and your own personal selfish gain instead of actually listening to God and instead of just loving him. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands. Father, I thank you for the fire of Jesus, for fresh fire in Jesus' name. Come on, give us some hearts and likes in this place. Come on, pray in the spirit. The spirit of prayer is a spirit of preservation. And I declare no weapon formed against you will prosper. No weapon formed against you. Are you hearing me today? God is breaking yokes and strongholds. The winds and waves are seizing. Ho! And there's a greater realm of prayer, fire, intimacy, and authority that God's releasing over you, over this church. I want you to hear me now, friends. I'm about to close. Listen, Monday, we have the prophetic word of the month for October. It's going to be very important, very important. Like I said, I really believe this coming month of October before the election and the selection of President Donald J. Trump on November 5th. I really believe this month of October is going to be the, one of the most witchiest months that's ever been in the history of humankind. I really believe that. So uh, I'm going to release a prophetic word for the month of October. But remember, when the devil has a plot, God has a plan. Amen. And God has always been there even before the enemy's been there. So there's no need to fear, no need to be anxious. But again, we do need to pray. We do need to be aware and have our prayer antenna shields up. So I want to encourage you. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Listen, friends, if this word uh, blessed you, if, if you uh, enjoyed this word and you you are in agreement, it bears witness with your spirit. I want you to share this. Can you please share this? Let's get this word out. Amen. And as well, I, I want you to consider to subscribe to our Facebook page. And you could even click the bell button to be notified whenever I come on live. Obviously, we know that Facebook meta and all these things, you know, even though people are allegedly repenting on public eye because it looks good for the public. But you know, these algorithms are controlled by the one world order and the enemy does not want these type of prophetic prayer strategies to be released so please click the bell button to be notified whenever i come on live follow this page love you god bless shabbat shalom